395 in your hymnal, 395. I have a song that Jesus gave me. Let's all stand together as we sing. In my heart there ringed a melody. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. It is a melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody of love. I love the Christ. singing this morning man you're not singing like you're cold at all and uh joy in your heart and uh the lord makes it makes that happen doesn't he and uh thanks for being in church this morning i love missions sunday we'll tell you more about that in just a little bit but uh thanks for being here today and let's bow together for prayer shall we father we thank you for another lord's day that you've given to us and father we're thankful that we have a song that jesus gave us and it was sent from heaven above I'm thankful that in my heart there rings a melody this morning, and it's because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, thank you for each one who's made their way to the church service this morning. And Lord, we pray that you'll meet with us today, that you'll minister to each and every individual's needs uh, that are present here today. We pray most of all that Christ will be lifted up, and that as he's lifted up, you'll draw all men unto him. Lord, may you be pleased with the service this morning. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated.
311, would you turn with me? 311, redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 311, let's sing that first, second, last stanza together. On that first. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever. some announcements for us listen carefully if you would regular schedule this afternoon 5 30 is our christian growth class and we meet down in the conference room right across from the nursery and tonight's lesson is going to be about missions and uh what about missionaries and how does someone become a missionary and how do they decide where they're going to be missionaries and how do they get the support to be a missionary and all those things will teach this evening uh, in the 530 class and so that's open to anybody who's interested uh, 530 tonight in the conference room then 630 tonight we'll be back in the auditorium for our evening service and Lord willing tonight we'll speak on the subject so send I you uh, those are the words uttered by Jesus and uh, John chapter 20 and we'll be looking at that this evening for part of I love missions Sunday now uh, on the back table are postcards okay there's three postcards in a stack all right those are all identical okay if you pick up a stack you're gonna have three to the same missionary okay so what you want to do is you want to take one off of different stacks so then you can send a postcard to our missionaries we started this last year and boy we, we got such a great response from our missionaries how how much they enjoyed uh, getting those postcards knowing that somebody thought about them uh, I hope as you fill it out to uh, you, you fill out the side and just let them know you're praying for them that you'll take a minute and pray for them while you fill that out and uh, that means that means so much that's they don't take that lightly and it's a great thing when you're you know thousands of miles away from home to get something in the mail and it's somebody from the states and uh, especially a church that supports you to, to not just send a somebody in the office who sends a check every month to them but uh, they know that someone in the congregation is thinking about them and prayed for them it means a lot to these folks and so uh, help yourself to those uh, when you bring them back in filled out you don't mail them just bring them back in to us if you will but we'd like you to have the postage on it I think it's marked on each one if it's international I think it's a dollar twenty and um, if it's uh, domestic it's 35 cents so you can I'm sorry Oh, don't want the post. You just want the money with it. Okay. All right. So um, however you want to uh, do that, you bring that in that way. That'll be great. And uh, just uh, let's, let's you know, go after that during handshaking, after the service. They'll still be there tonight. Uh, but let's, uh, let's be a blessing to our missionaries uh, this, this February, all right? And uh, help yourself to those cards. There's no limit to how many you want to take. Just, just make sure you fill out. Uh, what you take and do your best to write so they can read it and uh, they can be a blessing to, to them who get who, who receives it and uh, surely pray for them while you fill that out all right 
All right. And then this coming Saturday is going to be our chili cook-off and pie bake-off. Always a, a, a fun night of the year, and we look forward to that uh, this coming Saturday. All right. So there's a sign-up sheet for it downstairs, and uh, sign up on that. Let us know you're going to be here, and uh, we'll have a great time together. That's Saturday at 5 o'clock uh, in the Fellowship Hall. Okay. Now, let's take just a minute, and we'll welcome. Oh, I did have one other thing. Uh, there is some food that someone was able to get, and uh, it's free. There is um, just various things that's going to be on the table over in the fellowship hall. If you need some fruit, some uh, other things that uh, you can go through and pick up, help yourself. Uh, if you know somebody that you could get it for and take it to them, please take it. But uh, we want to. We don't want it to go to waste. Uh, but this was given to some folks. They have some extra, and so they'd like to pass that on and be a blessing to somebody. So if uh, you can use it or if you know someone who can use it, uh, help yourself this morning, okay? And let's, uh, let's make sure we get rid of that food uh, in the fellowship hall, all right? All right, now we'll take a minute and welcome any guests that we have with us in the service. We're always pleased when folks visit with us. Anybody here today for the very first time, would you put your hand in the air? We've got a young man right back here. Tell us who you are and where you're from. Okay. Great. Well, great to have you this morning. Thank you very much, Sean. Great. Thank you for being here. That's great. The usher's handed you a visitor's card, and if you'll be kind enough to fill that out for us. A uh, little bit, we have the offering. Just put the card in there, if you would, and keep the pen as our gift to you for coming. We're glad you're here this morning. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Let's give this young man a warm welcome, shall we?
uh, came to this church 2006, I think it was, on a New Year's Eve. Uh, how about that for a first service to come to? And uh, came to that on New Year's Eve. And uh, remember, uh, I told some of you the story. I got a letter in the mail from uh, Diane Stiltner, and she was recalling, counting in the letter how she got saved. And a uh, truck driver and listening to the uh, Christian station on XM radio as they went across the country, she learned that she's supposed to tithe. And so she didn't know where to send her tithe but that her dad recently started coming to our church, so she wanted to send her tithe here. And uh, Brother Yoder, there was $500 in the envelope. Of course, yeah, my first thought was, she's got the wrong church, and I'm going to have to give this back, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I started to think, well, who's her dad? And then I, you know, trying to figure out who is, uh, who's joined recently or who's been coming to church recently. And, and the only fellow it was was Paul Lamprecht. And I remember calling Paul up and saying, Paul, uh, do you have a daughter named Diane? He goes, yeah, yeah, Diane Stiltner. I said, hey. And I thought, Whew, good, you know. And uh, she said, says, truck driver. And I said, wow. And uh, she and Jim started uh, coming. And uh, Diane, of course, not, not long after they came, Jim got saved. And then they both got baptized. And Jim's in heaven now. And uh, just, uh, but boy, I tell you what, if you ever went through a rocky road, they, they got saved there. Well, of course, Dan got saved and baptized, and Jim got saved and baptized. And by, what, four months later, uh, Jim had his heart attack, and uh, they had to come off the road and, I mean, uh, lost their truck. Beautiful, beautiful truck that was theirs. Lost that. Lost the house they lived in. I mean, you went from a, a very great, a very nice, comfortable living and income to having nothing, just about. And, you know... Yeah, that's tough enough for anybody to face, let alone a brand new Christian to face. But, you know, the amazing thing about Diane was her faithfulness to it all. Uh, right from the get-go, you know, she they even changed their schedule. They used to not get back until Sunday night. And they changed the schedule to get back early enough uh, Saturday so they could get in church on Sunday. <clears throat> and they st they got the idea right away. We should be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. I'm not sure where they heard that, but they 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 got the idea that that was what they should do. And you know what? Uh, that anchored them, and uh, I think it anchored their it anchored them in to to go through the storms. And uh, tell you, we sure appreciate Diane Stiltner, and uh, she uh, don't don't let that roughness sometimes uh, fool you. Okay, she's. Uh, She's very soft-hearted, tender-hearted, serves, helps any way she can, uh, any time she can. She'll tell you she doesn't like kids, but I know she really does. And uh, I got a picture of her last week holding Alana, and she was smiling and kissing her. And we thought, uh-oh, we've got proof now that she really does. But we're going to hear from Diana this morning. Let's sing our song, and then we'll hear her testimony, all right? The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. I go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I was saved. June 14th, 2006. And the first time that I came here to Bible Baptist Church was December the 31st, 2006. It was the New Year's Eve party. And I came here because my dad was a member here. I um, wanted to come to a church where my dad was, um, wasn't saved until I was over 50. Daddy didn't know I was saved. And I came here to surprise him New Year's Eve. So, my husband and I came, and actually my husband was saved here in um, January of 2007. And we were both baptized in January of 2007 here at Bible Baptist. I like to be here at Bible Baptist Church because I have learned so much here. It's a preaching church. 
Um, I don't think you could come here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night without learning something. It's uh, Sunday evening is always one of my favorite services. I don't know why. Um, my pastor always gives scripture. We always are able to open our Bibles. I learned here the importance of the King James Bible. And when pastor preaches, it's out of the King James Bible. So it's a teaching church and it's a preaching church and it's also a reaching church. I like that the missionaries come here and that I know their names, I know their faces, I've sat and talked with them and then they go halfway around the world and, and reach others and, and that we're supporting those people and I'm supporting them by praying for them and by giving my tithes and, and also for the giving to the missions here. We reach Grove City, we reach Columbus, we reach people in prison. It's just a, a church that really reaches out. It has a heart for the sick, for the lost, that wants um, everybody to be saved. I like being a part of that. And lastly, it's a preaching church and it's a teaching church. It's a reaching church and it's a leeching church. <laughs> the people here, I mean, they like leech onto you and um, in a way that they just love on you and, and you really feel like you belong. And, and I, I can't imagine leaving here because this is, they all become part of my makeup and part of who I am as a Christian and part of who I am as I serve and as I learn here. It's um, the family here at Bible Baptist Church is awesome. The pastor is awesome. And I truly do love Bible Baptist Church. Amen. And I'll be sure to go to Diane Stiltner next time I need an outline. <coughs> 228. 228. Let's sing a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. He hideth my soul. Let's all stand together as we sing this first stanza. We'll have the children go out to junior church. On this first, a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. Where rivers of pleasure I see, he hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there. one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing the last stanza together.
blessings each moment he crowns and filled with his fullness divine i sing in my rapture of glory to god for such a redeemer Let's sing it all together. When clothed in his brightness, transported I rise on that last. When clothed in his brightness, transported I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, wonderful love, how shout with a million on high. He Said? Hey. Amen. Great singing. You can be seated. And uh, wonderful, wonderful singing today. Ushers are coming. We're ready to receive our offering this morning. We'll ask God's blessing on our giving today. And uh, Brother Pete Abrams, lead us in our prayer, if you would, please. Let us pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come before you today with joyful hearts in a place where we can worship, worship you freely. And Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for the word. We ask that you search us and uh, search us our hearts and uh, uh, open up and uh, uh, see that uh, there's, there's no, le no sin left within and uh, uh, let the uh, let you be the, the true uh, guide of that because uh, we know that you see our hearts, Lord. And we may we open our wallets and our purses today and uh, give as you commanded. And Lord, uh, uh, we ask that you watch our uh, pastor as he delivers the message today and uh, to put him aside and let his words be your words, Lord. And Lord, uh, we thank you for all of this. In his Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Take your Bibles this morning, if you would, please, for our scripture reading. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1, please. Romans chapter 1.
Romans chapter 1, we're going to read verses 14 through 16. We'll read 14 together, I'll read 15, and we'll end together reading verse 16. And verse 16 will be our text verse for this morning. And as our custom is, let's stand together, please, to read the Scripture, all of us standing to read God's Word together. And beginning on verse 14 of Romans chapter 1. Ready? I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And let's pray together, shall we? <clears throat> Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of the scripture here this morning. And Father, we thank you for the wonderful music today. It's helped us, it's encouraged us, it, it's just a, a wonderful thing to not only sing the songs, but to think about the words of these songs. And Lord, it's ministered to our hearts this morning. And so, Father, I pray now that you would use the special to continue that and to make our hearts ready to receive the truth from your word today. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. They bound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed they led him through the streets in shame they spat upon the savior so pure and free from sin they said crucify him he is to blame he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone. Upon his precious head They placed a crown of thorns They laughed and said Behold the king They struck him and they cursed him And mocked his holy name All alone he suffered everything When they nailed him to the cross, his mother stood nearby. He said, woman, behold thy son. He cried, I thirst for water, but they gave him none to drink. Then the sinful work of man was done. To the howling mob he yielded, he did not for mercy cry. The cross of shame he took alone. And when he cried, it's finished, he gave himself to die. Salvation's wondrous plan. destroy this world 
Our Heavenly Father, we bow before you in prayer, and Lord, we want to thank you for the truth of that song. We know that you could have called, the scripture says, 12 legions of angels. Thank you for being willing to die alone for us. Thank you that you became sin for us when you knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in you. And Lord, we love you this morning and we're asking here in prayer before we come to the preaching of your word that you will open our eyes and open our understanding. Lord, I'm praying and asking you that you will help me as I bring the message and please help the folks as they listen to the message this morning. May your will be accomplished here in our midst today. Do what only you can do here, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. The... The songwriter wrote these words, Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear to own His cause or blush to speak His word? And must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease while others fought to gain the prize and sailed through bloody seas? No. I must fight if I would win. Increase my courage, Lord. I'll bear the toil, endure the pain, supported by Thy Word. If there's ever a time, I believe that this song needs to be not a song, but the cry of our heart. I believe we're living in that day. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1 that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's ever a time that it's time for God's people to stand up and to openly and publicly declare that they're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the day in which we live right now. Don't be like the little boy who had a dog. Kind of a mangy thing. And somebody asked him, what kind of dog is that? And he said, well, he's a police dog. The person looked and said, well, he doesn't look like a police dog. And the little boy said, that's because he's in the Secret Service. (laughs) Well, the bad news is we probably have too many Christians that are in the Secret Service. and Not out and out for Jesus Christ. Don't think that, don't, don't get to thinking that it was easier in his day than it is in our day to stand up and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Don't forget of the time in which Paul lived and the time that he wrote this, and particularly who he wrote it to here, the Roman believers. Today, we decorate things with the cross. We will have a cross behind the baptistry. Some churches have crosses in top of their building. People will wear crosses around their neck. And so we decorate things with the cross, but you understand it wasn't that way in Paul's day. The cross was an instrument of execution. It would be similar to you walking in and you have an electric chair necklace or a gas chamber necklace you would not wear such a thing because that's an instrument of death but that's what the cross was in Romans in the Roman day in fact you didn't even mention the cross in Roman society in polite company it was not discussed it was so ghastly so gruesome 
that you did not mention the cross and let alone the one who died on the cross who claimed to be the Savior of the world. That's Jesus Christ. Who was He? He was a Jewish carpenter. That's the Roman point of view. Why would I want to make a big deal out of a Jewish carpenter who died on a cross? Was executed. Crucified. Paul, who was a Jew himself, writing to the Romans, who really didn't have any special appreciation for the Jews. Rome had their own philosophers. Rome had their own educators. Rome had their own gods that they would look to and that they would trust in. And you could think if Paul believed this gospel, evidently he must be uneducated. Quite the contrary. Paul was very educated. We know that according to 1 Corinthians, he could speak at least five languages. Paul was not only brilliantly intelligent, he was very educated. Probably a triple PhD. Not, not, not honorarily given, but earned. And, and he was uh, of the tribe of Benjamin. He had a great pedigree that he could have looked to and he could have gloried in. But it's interesting, when he comes to the Romans, he doesn't bring his education to mind. And he doesn't bring his background to mind. He doesn't bring his pedigree to mind or his ancestry. What he says, I'm not ashamed of. He says, I'm not ashamed of my PhDs. He said, I'm not ashamed. He's not telling us that I'm not ashamed, Romans, of, of my education. I'm not ashamed of my background. I'm not ashamed of who I am. What he says is, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what I'm not ashamed of. Dr. R.G. Lee used to tell the story about a preacher. He said he would talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ and his relationship to it. And this preacher said at 30, I was a young preacher and I studied the world's religions and the world, world's philosophies and I compared them to the gospel. And I said, quote, there's nothing better than the gospel. But he said, when I got to be 40 and the burdens of life began to press heavily upon me, and the years seemed to go by quickly, I began to say there's nothing as good as the gospel. But then he said time went on and there were some empty chairs in the house. Some who had stepped over into glory. The grave diggers had come and done their work. And I began to say there's nothing to be compared to the gospel. But then I got to be 60. When I got to be 60, I began to see with improved spiritual sight. And I begin to see through illusions and the vanity the things of earth. And in the clear light of eternity, I said, there is nothing but the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, then I got to my 70s, my body beginning to wear out, and I began to have many new limitations. And I knew before long I'll be going home. And he said, now I sing. Should all the forms which men devise attack my faith with treacherous art, I would call them all vanities and lies and bind the gospel to my heart. My friend, you'll find out that as you go through life, if God allows you to get to your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, your 80s, you're going to find out nothing else matters but the gospel. When you get the call, as I get called sometimes, to go talk to someone who is knocking on death's door, the discussion isn't about what kind of job you worked, how many hours of overtime you put in, what kind of pension did they give you, what kind of home have you been able to live in, what kind of cars have you driven. No, when, all, when it comes down to it, listen my friend, the only thing that matters is what have you done with Jesus Christ? What about the Gospel? What about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? That's what's really going to matter. And that's all that's going to matter. 
Why would we be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Why would we want to be a closet Christian? Why would we want to be part of the secret service? It's amazing to me, and this, by the way, in this day and age when we see so many others who boldly stand out for what they think and for what they believe. Because God's people hunker down and, 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 and close in and don't say what we believe. I think it's time for God's people to stand up and boldly declare, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to give you four simple reasons this morning why we ought to stand for the gospel of Christ and not be ashamed. Why we ought to be a bold believer for Jesus Christ. And it's right here in our text this morning in Romans chapter 1. And the first reason is because of the person of the gospel the person of the gospel Romans 1 and verse 16 Paul writes I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it's the power of God unto salvation it's the gospel of Christ it's the gospel of Jesus Christ it's the gospel of Christ who is the son of God who is God come in the flesh he is the God man totally unique of all the scientists, of all the philosophers, of all the rulers of the world, of all the religious leaders of the world, over, over the period of time and over uh, 60 billion people or so since the beginning of time in this world, they're, 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 none have ever impacted the world like Jesus Christ has impacted the world. None of them have. Jesus towers like Mount Everest above all the others. Nobody's ever attracted as much adoration, as much criticism, and as much opposition as Jesus Christ has and continues to this day. Think about that. Though it's been 2,000 years or more since He's come, right now at this time, this morning, across our country and, 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 and really in a if you take several time zones uh, throughout this day today, at any given moment, there are millions of people that are gathering in His name. There are millions of people today that are reading His Word today and studying about Him and learning about Him and singing about Him. That's amazing. No other leader can say that. No other person in history can claim that. Only Jesus Christ. He's an amazing, amazing individual. He never wrote a book, and yet more books have been written about him than any person who ever lived. Never painted a picture, never composed any poetry, never wrote any music, but more art, more poetry, and more music has been written and composed about Jesus Christ than anyone else. He's the object of songs and plays and poetry and art. He never raised an army, yet millions would gladly lay down their life for Him. It's estimated in this year that there will probably be at least 350,000 martyrs for Jesus Christ. Hard for us to imagine that in America. Because oftentimes, listen, oftentimes Christians in these days are slaughtered by the thousands and we do not hear about it. The media will not tell us. Can I help you understand something? And I, I hope that you don't just look at that, that uh, used to say the box in your living room. Nobody has a box anymore. You just have a square. Maybe a few of you still have a box. But, you know, uh, don't, don't get your news from, listen, the media will tell you what they want you to think the news is. And if it's not newsworthy to them, it's not going to be reported to you. Be wise. He had no formal education, yet thousands of universities and seminaries and colleges and schools have been founded in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, every major religion relies upon performance for salvation. Hinduism says there's a fourfold path to salvation. Buddhism says there's an eightfold path to salvation. 
Islam rests upon the five pillars of Islam. Catholicism says salvation is gained through fulfilling the sacraments. You see, every major religion will talk about performance for salvation. But the gospel of Jesus Christ centers upon a person. And the person is Jesus Christ. Salvation is never based on what we do. It's based on what Jesus Christ has done for us when He died on the cross. And the Bible makes it clear as we spoke in Sunday school this morning that apart from Jesus Christ there is no salvation in any other. Don't think... Listen, I told the Sunday school class it just grieves my heart when I read as I again this week I read about how 98% of uh, people, you know, in evangelical churches, they, they do a survey and they say, yes, salvation is only by faith in Jesus Christ alone. And then they follow that up with, yeah, but if someone doesn't accept Christ their Savior, but they're sincere and they're honest and they're, they're, they're upright, will they still get to heaven? And over 50% of the people said, yeah, they'll still get in. And listen, folks, make sure we understand, apart from Jesus Christ, no one gets in. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man, no man, no woman will come unto the Father but by Him. Why would you be ashamed to identify yourself with somebody as wonderful as Jesus Christ? There's a young man who lived a wicked and a vile life. He had been a, what someone might call a deep in sin. He had drunk deeply, if you say, from the cup of sin, but gloriously he had heard the gospel of Christ and he had received Christ as his Savior. After salvation, he was called to preach. He was not articulate and he did not go get a Bible education of any kind. He just began to preach. His heart was hot for God and he was what you call people when they first get saved sometimes. You say, boy, they're really on fire for Christ. He had a little church and he began to preach and God began to move and folks began to get saved and the church began to grow. One Sunday, someone came into the congregation who had known him B.C. Before Christ. Before he knew Christ. And that person sat in the congregation and was very interested in the fact that this man's up here preaching like he was when he knew what he used to be. And he wrote a note and sent it up to the pulpit by an usher and when the pastor opened the note, what that man had done was he had made a list of all the sins that he knew that man had committed before Christ. And then at the bottom it says this, what are you doing up there? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? But to that preacher's credit, he did not crumple the note up and put it in his pocket. He took the note up and he stood behind the pulpit with it. And he took the list of those terrible and horrible and hurtful things that he had done and he read them one by one to the congregation, not leaving one thing out. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very ashamed of myself, but I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Oh, don't be ashamed of Jesus. Jesus said in Mark 8, 38, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father. I tell new converts that after they get saved and you say, now it's time to make a profession of faith or time to get baptized. And they say, oh, I, I don't know if I, I want to do that. I say, listen, Jesus said, Whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of that. Don't be ashamed to identify with Jesus Christ. He surely wasn't ashamed to hang naked on a cross and die for you. 
he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. Why didn't he do that? Because he wanted to die alone for you and me to pay the price for sin. The person of the gospel is Jesus Christ. That's the first reason I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The second reason is I'm not ashamed of the gospel because of the salvation of the gospel. Look at it again in verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. That's a good word, isn't it? That's what the gospel's all about. Can you think of anything more important than salvation? Can you think of anything more important than being saved? Is it business? Is it pleasure? Is it fame? I'm not... You know, you know what? As you get older, I guess you, you begin to appreciate what you have. And one of the things you appreciate more than anything else as you get older is the fact, I have salvation. You can listen to the to the millionaire politicians speak on television. You know what? I don't want I don't want to trade places with them. I don't care how much money they have. I don't I don't want that. Now I wouldn't trade my salvation for that. I wouldn't trade my salvation for anything on Wall Street or anything that Hollywood has to offer. All the social engineers are trying to save society. And we have to make sure that we understand that we're not here to Christianize the world. We're not here to save civilization from wreckage. We're here to try to save man from the wreckage of civilization. That's what we're about. One by one. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. Preaching, getting, getting somebody saved by the gospel of Christ. That's salvation. Someone said the incarnate Christ, the Christ of yesterday, the Christ come in the flesh, that's Christ of the past. And by the way, through Him and through His death on the cross that happened 2,000 years ago, we are saved. We are forgiven of our sin. But then there's an indwelling Christ that He dwells, in, according to the book of Colossians, He dwells in our heart by faith. That's the present salvation. That's the present Christ. He is salvaging us to live a life for His honor and for His glory. That's why He indwells us. And He empowers us. Then there's the invisible Christ. That's the one who's coming again. That's the one we're waiting for. We're, we're not just waiting, but we're listening. Because we're waiting for the shout <laughs> and listening for the trump of God and, and, and waiting for Him to return. And, and what is that? The fact that, uh, that I have salvation from the past and forgiveness of sin and in the present in delivering from my sins and in the future where God will take me away from the presence of sin. What is all that? That's salvation. All of that summed up in that beautiful word called salvation. And I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I know that word. I'm not ashamed because that salvation in the person of Jesus Christ has saved me from hell and saved me from eternal damnation. What a salvation. The person of salvation, the salvation of the gospel, the person of the gospel. Number three, I'm not ashamed because of the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. There's never been any greater power than the power of the gospel. What can wash away my sin? Hey, psychiatry isn't going to do it. Okay? Psychology can't do it. The power of God can do it. That's the only thing that can do it. And apart from the gospel... You, you cannot be cleansed from your sin. There are not many ways to heaven. There's one way to heaven. And it's through Jesus Christ. 
not ashamed of the power of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the power of the Word of God. The power of the book. The Word of God is quick. What's quick mean? Alive. It's alive. It's alive and it is powerful. Don't underestimate the power of the Word of God. The power of giving the Gospel to people. I know that the, the Gospel and people giving the Gospel, that has the power to take, to take old truck drivers. Well, I'm not sorry. I shouldn't say old truck drivers, should I? Huh? But what, 20, how many years on the road? 32 years on the road. And, and by and large, most of the time, you don't look at 32-year veteran truck drivers as ripe candidates for salvation. Truck drivers can be a pretty rough bunch. So what, what was it that saved a dying Stiltner? What was it? By the way, a, 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 a cigarette smoking and, and nothing wrong with drinking and maybe, I don't know what else they, they, they did, but listen, what, what changed them? What was that that made it when she, quit, she got saved and she quit smoking and she looked over at her husband, they're driving a truck and he's still smoking and she picks up his pack of cigarettes and says, you enjoy that cigarette? And he says, yeah, I sure am. She said, good, it's your last one. She crumbled up the pack and threw it out the window. That's how he quit. What was it that changes somebody like that? The power of the gospel. Listen, it's the power of the gospel. How can you take that maniac of Gadara in Mark chapter two, who or Mark chapter five, who who is naked and cutting himself and screaming, and they try to help him? Hey, society did everything they could to try to tame this guy and bring him under control so he can be a member of society. Nothing worked. Till Jesus came. And the power of the gospel is what changed that man's life. And many of you could testify today the changes made in your life. It's powerful, folks. Never underestimate the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to make you a new creature in Christ. It is supernatural. Never underestimate. I'm not ashamed of the person of the gospel, the salvation of the gospel, the power of the gospel, and then I'm not ashamed because of the simplicity of the gospel. Notice what it says in verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. That's it. To everyone that believeth. You say, now come on, Pastor. That's, that's too simplistic. You got to complicate it a little more than that. No, you do not. Because I didn't write it, God wrote it. You call it foolish if you want, you call it simplistic if you want. But the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. It's a matter of believing on Jesus Christ. When in Sunday school today, when the eunuch came to water and said, here's water, what doth hinder me from being baptized? Uh, Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Why? Because with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Oh my friend, believing in your heart brings you everlasting life. When you believe in Jesus Christ with all your heart. The Philippian jailer who came out that night ready to kill himself. And he asked the question, the only time I think in the Bible that question is asked. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Well now, if, if listen, if being a good person could save you, here would be a good spot to put that in, don't you think? If having to join a church would save you, here's a good spot to put that in. If, if we had to have the five pillars of Islam, here's a good point to put that in, is it not? If there was a four or eightfold path to salvation, here would be a good place for that to come in. If I had to get baptized in order to be saved, here would be a good place to put that in because the question is asked, point blank, sirs, what must I do to be saved? But the answer comes, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's it. Plus nothing. Minus nothing. Believe in Jesus Christ. That's salvation. 
That's pretty simple, isn't it? What if God said, what if God said, everybody wants to be saved, run around the block? I know some of you are thinking, well, I'm out. <laughs> Seriously, what about, what about crippled children? How could they be saved? What if God said, everybody wants to be saved, read a chapter of the Bible? What about people who can't read? What about people who have no Bible to read? Over half the world, three billion some people, they have no Bible in their language to read. What about them? How about everybody wants to be saved, give $100? I kind of like that one. No, but uh, you... You know what? Some people don't have $100 to give. They could not be saved. You see, you, you can look at some things and people think it's very simple, but, but the Bible says it's by faith that it might be by grace. And it's of grace, it's no more of works. It can't be works and grace, and it can't be, if it's works, it can't be grace, and if it's grace, it can't be works. You cannot mix the two together, it's impossible. It's only by grace, through faith. Whosoever believeth. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And he said to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm glad it's a whosoever gospel. Aren't you? And the only way it can be whosoever is because Christ died for the world. John 3.16, say it with me. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you believe that? Are you ashamed of that message? Who have you told the message to this week? Who have you shared that with this week? I'm not saying to deny the message. I'm saying have you just been quiet about the message? Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And he wrote it to people who, who he, listen, Paul to be accepted by them could have, could have said, I sat at the feet of Gamaliel. I've got these educational degrees. I am, a, I am a Roman citizen. He could have listed things that would have made him accepted with them. And I'm fear that now in these days, Christians are just looking for ways to be accepted with the world. And we're leaving out the most important thing. The gospel of Jesus Christ. It's never been acceptable. It's always been a, a little harsh. Why? The cross. The cross. It's the cross of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Heavenly Father, I pray you'll help us this morning with this truth today. Thank you for the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, help each one of us in this room this morning not to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. But Lord, it is not just a matter of missions and crossing an ocean to go tell other people of another country or another language. But oh, God, show us this morning that each of us have opportunities every single week, every day of every week, to not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. America needs you. America needs the gospel. Once again, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, help us. Help there be a group of believers at Bible Baptist Church that will leave this place on 
the second Sunday of February in 2016 and say I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, speak to hearts today. And if there's any in this room that have never received Christ as their Savior, that they would experience the saving power of that gospel this morning and receive Christ as their Savior. Heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. I'm going to finish praying in just a moment. I wonder how many folks here this morning would say, Preacher, I have experienced that saving power of the gospel. It's a time in my life when I received Christ as my Savior. I know the person of the gospel you talked about, and I asked Jesus to be my Savior. I was one of those whosoever believeth. And I know Christ has saved my soul. I know I have eternal life. Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony. Will you slip it up for a moment that I may see it? I know that I'm saved. All right, you may put it down. Are you here today and would say, Pastor, I, I, I don't know that for sure. I can't say that I'm positive that when I die I'll go to heaven. Would you let me pray for you? I, would, I, would, I, I won't embarrass you, won't call you out, but I'll pray for you. Would you slip your hand up and just say, Pastor, pray for me this morning. I'm not certain of my salvation. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Appreciate your honesty this morning. And God knows. God knows your heart. I wonder how many believers here today now would say, Pastor, God spoke to my heart about not being ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not, not, not holding back, but standing up boldly for Jesus Christ. I'm not going to be a secret service Christian. I'm going to be an out and out Christian. I don't want to be ashamed of the gospel. I want to stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And preacher, the Lord spoke to my heart today. And I want Him to help me to stand and to proclaim the gospel of Christ. Pastor, pray for me this morning. Will you slip your hand up? Amen. Amen. That's great. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You may put them down. Now listen carefully. In a moment we'll pray. And then we'll have our invitation. God has spoken to your heart. I want you to respond to Him this morning. If you're a believer here, you just need to come and pray and ask God to give you the boldness you need to stand for Him and not be ashamed of the Gospel. Listen carefully. If you slipped your hand up this morning, I'm going to pray for you if you're not sure that you're saved. But when I'm done praying and the piano begins to play and Bob begins to sing, others will be moving to come to pray. Would you slip out? Meet me here at the front. We'll have someone who's been trained. They'll take a Bible and they'll show you how you can know Christ as your Savior. Oh, walk out the doors in a few minutes knowing you have eternal life. Knowing you're on your way to heaven. I wouldn't put it off another minute. I would settle the matter. If you're here today and you're saved and you've never been scripturally baptized, you ought to come and say, Pastor, I need to be baptized. I need to be obedient to the Lord. Whatever it is that God's dealt with your heart about, I want you to respond to Him. Heavenly Father, thank You for these hands that have been uplifted this morning. Thank You for speaking to our hearts today. And Lord, I pray that Your will will be done now in these next few moments of invitation. Those who need to just pray and ask You for the help of the Holy Spirit and the boldness to, to stand for Christ and not be ashamed of the Gospel of Christ. Lord, others who come and they need to know Christ, help them to come. Lord, I pray that you'd open their understanding, open their heart, and they, may they be one of the whosoevers that can believe in Jesus today. Lord, have your will in each and every life, please, and I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, the pianist will play. As she plays, Bob's going to sing. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this morning, will you? That's right. Thou art the potter. That's right. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Search me and try me, 
master today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Absolute sway, fill with thy spirit till all shall see Christ only always living in me. Go ahead and be seated for a minute, if you would. Read a name for you. Great to have Madison coming this morning. Madison, last Sunday, received Christ as her Savior. And uh, today she comes to follow the Lord in baptism. And uh, we're excited about that decision, Madison. God bless you. That's great. And uh, we're, uh, we're happy for your new life in Christ. And uh, I told her, just great to see her countenance. And she's smiling. And uh, it's, uh, it, you always tell a lot about somebody's countenance, and uh, you got a beautiful countenance, and it's great to see God doing good things in your life, and you letting him do that, that's a great thing. Congratulations on your decision. You follow Miss Wallace, and Ricky, you can go down too if you'd like, and she'll get you all prepared. We'll get ready to baptize. Brother Yoder, would you come up, please? And um, Brother Bob, how many remember Isaac Eichmann? Eichmann, 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 who came to church here for a while and was from up north, and his mom had been battling cancer for 10 years, and she passed away this last week. And the service for his mom is up in, at Heritage Baptist Church up in Smithville, Ohio, and it's like 2 o'clock, and it's 2 or 2.30, and it's, it's a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour drive up there. And Brother Bob, really, he knew the family. The Eichmanns were in the church there, and he really feels like he should represent. His mom and dad are out of the country. Bob Reed's parents are, so they won't be there. And he really feels obligated that he should be there, and, and I think he should. Yeah. So uh, we've let him slip out so he can get on the road and get up there uh, for that service this afternoon. Brother Dave just found out that he's going to lead the music for baptism. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're here today, amen? And we, we sure are, that's for sure. And uh, so you give your request to Brother Dave, and I listen, uh, he may not have all the experience that Bob Reed has, okay? So if there's one you just have no idea what it is, then we'll move on to another one, all right? But uh, he'll carry you through while we get ready for baptism, okay? Brother Yoder. Uh, there is one right here, brother. Ready to go. All right, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to be first? <laughs> Gage? 5.37. 5.07. Come thou fount. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song. Number 10. 
I have decided to follow Jesus. <clears throat> I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Back on the second, though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Brother Van Gelder. 550, 550, heavenly sunshine, is that a different one, okay. Heavenly sunshine, heavenly sunshine, flooding my soul with glory divine. Heavenly sunshine, heavenly sunshine, hallelujah, Jesus is mine. Pete? 284. Just a closer walk with thee. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. is my plea daily walking close to thee let it be dear lord let it be miss janet 16 it is no secret Madison Leach, and Madison, upon a public profession of your faith in Christ as your Savior, and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bearing the likeness of Jesus' death, 
And the servant said, Master, it has done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. All right, let's do a couple more. 46. Forty six when I see the blood. Two forty six. Two forty six. Okay. All right. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Brother Chuck. 45. Verse still, it's still the blood, verse two. And I heard a voice saying, Father, I'll go. I'll pay his sin debt at Calvary's flow. I'll bear in my body the marks of go too far <laughs> have you lead the closing song here in a minute all right let's stand together and we'll have a word of prayer all right thank you father for a wonderful morning this morning thank you father for speaking to our hearts thank you for being a God who's not far away but very near to us and Lord we pray for those who have made decisions and those who are in the process of making decisions and those whom you're dealing with their heart I pray, God, that each would yield to you, and Lord, find that the true happiness comes when we say yes to God. And so, Lord, uh, give us a good afternoon. Remind us that it isn't just the Lord's morning, but it's the Lord's day. And I pray that we'll be back in our place tonight for the service, ready to hear again from you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Amen. Let's sing uh, The Joy of the Lord is My Strength and uh, go to Bible Baptist and I love my church. Let's sing that as our closing song. Brother Dave, you come take care of that. I'm going to go to the back door, all right? The Joy. your postcards in the back and you are dismissed.